Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm here with the final night of the 13 Nights of Halloween for 2020. Hey, how's it going? Happy Halloween, everyone. It's right though, or if you're not watching this on Halloween, happy whatever day it is. Uh, it's going to be the finale of the 13 Nights of Halloween for 2020, as I've already said in the beginning. And today's video is going to be different because I'm going to do, similar to a day in the life of Wokey, I'm going to be doing Wokey Scary Stories, three terrifying stories that all relate to, you guessed it, Pollo Loco because I have some very interesting stories from back then. So, without further ado, let's get into the spooky theme. Wait, no, let's get into the spooky mindset. All right, everyone? So, growing up, I was never really allowed to leave the house. The reason is, is that my mom always told me that the neighborhood that we were in was super dangerous. Um, I never really figured out why, because eventually when I turned... So I always looked outside, so I always assumed whatever was outside was bad. But when I turned 18, I was finally allowed to go to the 7-Eleven, and eventually when I actually hit college, I finally asked, hey, for breakfast, can I just walk to Pollo Loco? And that way, I don't have to constantly keep eating what's ever inside the house. She said, yeah, sure, that's perfectly fine. I have no problems with that. So I started walking to Pollo Loco. Um, and the first time I remember walking to Pollo Loco, it was perfectly fine, everything was perfectly fine. And everything was perfectly fine for a couple weeks. Like, when I, was, when I first left the house, everything seemed fine. Uh, you know, we didn't live in the nicest place, but it wasn't like the worst place either. If I got home before nightfall, it was perfectly okay. There was one time when I was coming home <laughs> super late because I was eating Pollo Loco after it got dark. And when I was coming home, a man uh, approached me and he came up to me and he whispered into my ear, Hey man, you selling any drugs? And I had to very quickly tell him. No, sir. I'm sorry, I don't sell drugs. And I walked off, and that's because I wear a black sweater whenever I walk out, and that makes me look like a drug dealer at night. Anyway, I digress. So, at age 18, I'm walking to Pollo Loco. I'm starting to get into the groove of it. Then one day, when I'm crossing the street to get to the other side of the Pollo Loco, I see an old man, and there was something about him that I, he didn't look right from far away. Like his hair, he had already looked kind of like not kempt. He had like hair, he looked like a little bit like Ichabod Crane in terms of the nose situation. But the top of his head had no, he looked like the Crypt Keeper, he was a younger man. So the top of his head was completely bald, but the sides around it still had hair flowing down to it. It was a very specific hairstyle that you don't see many people being able to pull off for a very good reason. So I see from the side this old man, and I go, what? Why does he look like that? But I'm like, okay, whatever. I'm not the greatest dresser in the world either. I'll let this probably 80-year-old man dress however he wants. And then the light turns green, and I start making my way towards him. And it's at this point, as I get closer and closer, it feels like time is kind of stopping. Because I'm getting closer and closer to his face. And by the time and time I get closer to his face, I realize there's something wrong with it. So first of all, like I said, he has kind of a longish, a little long crooked nose. Um, but there was something between his eyes. And as I got closer, I looked and I was like, what it, what is it? Because I had, again, at 18, I had not seen many other people besides the kids at school. Um, and as I got closer, I started to realize he has some kind of big black pus in between his eye socket um and it's a giant ball of it like the probably the signs of like a like a hmm, what's a good way of saying you know like a tennis ball cut a tennis ball in half like it looked kind of like it was consuming half of his eyes basically and as i got closer i noticed that it was like it was also pure black as well but as i got closer i looked at his face and that's what that was a mistake huge mistake because <laughs> when i looked at his face i saw into his eyes and it was probably the most scared i'd ever been because he had red eyes 
like dark red eyes, like demon eyes, basically. So this man had demon eyes and some kind of puss thing that was also, I think, slightly leaking when I saw him. So, as I said, we were walking, we are about at the midway point, and at this point I think he realizes that I'm looking, and I quickly look front and I run to the other side of it and it's the end. And I go, I look back at him, and I keep looking at him like, I don't, I don't understand what's going on there. And I go inside the Pollo Loco, everything's fine. I eat my food and then I leave. Um, I'm at the light. There he is again. I don't know what the deal was with him, but we were about to walk face to face yet again. Um, I was chicken shit though, so I decided to go the opposite way. Um, that also meant that for a brief, brief, brief period of time, we were in the same vicinity, basically. Um, and I remember feeling like, oh my god, please just don't look at him. Please don't look at him. So I go to cross the light to the other side because I didn't want to. Wa- I didn't want to face him again. I didn't want to look him face to face. And when I get to the other side, I go, "Where is he in the back?" Because I was wondering where was he. And when I look back, nowhere to be seen. As far as I could tell, this creepy old man that I had found on my walk to Pollo Loco had never been around. And I've seen him a couple times um, going there, but I feel like every time that I've only ever seen him. It was when I was alone, and there was no one else for me to verify with him there. Um, I did eventually learn to just kind of look down and keep walking forward as fast as I could, and or hopefully pay attention to the light and move out to the other side. But I remember feeling like, what in the name of hell is that? So that's one of the very spooky things. Running into this old man who... It really scared the shit out of me as someone who's 18 and not a lot of experience out in the world seeing something like this and obviously now I can kind of go back and say he probably had a medical condition but what medical con- medical condition does that to you I don't know I can't really describe it well enough to be like because my sister is obviously someone in the medical field I could ask her I should actually ask her this after that but anyway that's story one here's story two um I'm walking to the Pollo Loco. A lot of my walks to Pollo Loco are usually pretty nice. Um, One time I saw a man from the side and he looked like he had just been laying on the floor. Um, And I said, okay, that's weird. You don't see that every day. But he was on the opposite side of the Pollo Loco. But as I'm walking to the Pollo Loco, I'm on the hospital side. There's really only one long passageway to the Pollo Loco unless you take a detour, in which case it go, it takes much longer. And that's also the only way I can really come home because if I go any other way, it takes way longer than it should. That's basically the way that the, the structure is in my specific home situation at the time. Um... When I'm walking, and it's also walking past a hospital. So as we're walking past a hospital, I look down and I see a dude on the floor splayed out in the middle of the road. Not in the middle of the road, in the middle of the sidewalk. And I go, what? So I walk a little bit forward. I walk forward. Just kind of, I'd look at him. I kind of... <laughs> I kind of check to see if he's dead, because there's always a chance that he's dead. He's not dead. Um, so I go, okay, and I walk forward. I go to Pollo Loco, I eat. A lot of my stories involve actually eating Pollo Loco, because god damn it, I need to get this damn chicken in my mouth. Because god, I love that Pollo Loco. But, okay, so I'm coming back home. There's really only one way home, and it's through this way. Um, I see the dude, and at this point, there's a lady with me, and the lady sees. So we're at the hospital crossroads, and I look at it, and I look to the lady. And I'm like, "That's a guy on the floor, right?" And she goes, "Yeah." And I go, "I came here about an hour ago. He was still on the floor, and now he's still on the floor here." And she goes, "That's weird." I'm like, "Why doesn't he just go inside the hospital?" like yeah that is weird no one's literally called the hospital on this guy don't know what his story is at this point the man stands up stands in complete 
middle of the of the sidewalk. He's now he has been basically knocked out for an hour. He stands back up. Me and the woman who have been talking to each other at this point slowly looking at him, kind of wondering, should we go? We both look and go, hmm. That sucks. <laughs> Don't know what that's about. It's sure as creepy as hell because he's not moving. He just has been on the floor for however long. As I said, I found him there an hour ago. I don't know how long he's been there. Um, so what happens next? I look to the side and I notice that there's actually a way to go through um, the hospital. It's kind of a long way. Wait, I can cut through the hospital and then go up a little to the side and then I can walk towards the house. So basically what I'm saying is that... Um, I, going forward, there's a little bit of a fork that I can go inside the hospital. You know, basically make me do a UE turn back to where I need to go, and then I, from there I can go left. But the, the way through just means that I have to go the long way across this man, as opposed to just actually walking forward. Um, I end up going to the side, and the lady also joins me with me there too. So we kind of talk and we kind of like laugh. I'm like, haha, what a weird thing. Um, and then I cross the road. And as I'm crossing the road, I look back, because, again, if I look back, I would see the guy there, and I want to see if he's still standing. I look back, he is still standing, only now he has no clothes. And the lady who was with me, we were, she had to go forward to continue going forward. She had to go, like, another direction. Um, we were basically at the intersect from there, and then from that point she was going to go up, and I was going to go to the left, and the man was to the right. Um, and I look and I go, that dude's naked, right? And she goes, oh my god, I'm, s and at that point she just walks and does not look at him anymore. I still look at him because he's just kind of standing there, up, upright, completely naked, not doing anything. His clothes are obviously on the floor, but he's just kind of standing there nakedly. And I go, okay what the hell would have happened if we had actually gone through there all right whatever now that's a little bit left as less of a spooky story and more of a what the hell is up with the naked man but i told you a story of an old man with a fucked up uh face i told you a naked man now here's something that actually happened to me that i was extremely scared of this is a there's no other way of saying it other than let me just get into it so once again, making my trek down to Pollo Loco. Gotta get me some chicken. It's early in the morning. I'm having a good old time. I'm um, walking over there, and right when I'm about to enter inside the Pollo Loco, I hear someone call me by my real name. And I go, what? Nobody, no one but my family should know who I am here, because I don't really say, you know, I want, I obviously come, but I, at this point I had been two years since I've been going there um, they know my face they wouldn't know my name because I haven't really told them my name uh, except for the Pollo Loco people the Pollo Loco people knew my name by the way uh, <laughs> they knew my name and they knew my order um, so I hear my name I look back and there's two there's two dudes and I go hello how do you know me and they go you don't remember us I'm like no I'm sorry I don't remember you it's like, we went to high school together. I'm like, that was two years ago. But at that point, I kind of look at them and I'm like, one was Hispanic and the other one was an African-American gentleman. And I go, okay. I vaguely remember you guys. Sure. Hey, how's it going? And they go, oh, you know, good to catch up. You know, you know. We, we were just after, around in the neighborhood. I'm like, okay, you guys live around here? And they're like, no, we don't. I'm like, so what the hell are you guys, are you guys here for the Boy Loco? And they go, no. Um, I'm like, so what are you guys doing around here? And they're like, we're here because we're recruiting for something. I go, yeah, you're recruiting for something? Sure. And they're like, would you be interested in coming with us? And um, hearing, hearing about something. And I go, well, I at that, at that age, I've always had a problem with just saying outright no to people. I prefer to just kind of make excuses. So I'm like, 
I don't know. I'm kind of tired from walking. He was like, no, it's okay. We have a car. Well, you guys have a car? And they go, yeah, it's parked right there. And it was parked right by the Pollo Loco. And I was like, okay. Um, oh, actually, I'm very hungry. So I actually came over here to eat the Pollo Loco, so I'm sorry. And it's going to take me at least an hour. You guys got plenty of time to go somewhere. He was like, no, no, no. We'll go inside the Pollo Loco, and we'll be with you while you eat. And then when you're done, we can go over there. And I go, oh, uh, at that point, I had not, no one in their right mind waits for someone to finish eating if they have something to do. And I go, okay. And I go and send the boy a loco and they come follow me with me. And at this point, I, once I said, okay, I'll come with you, I realize I've made a huge fucking mistake. I've never really left the, except for going to high school, I've never really left the general area of where I've been. I've always been very content with just kind of living wherever I am. I have no idea where they're going to take me or anything. I didn't really ask them any questions. So I said, oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to stall them by eating chicken as slow as possible that they'll just want to leave and be like, oh, you know what? And at that point, I can be like, oh, you know what? Give me, you know, maybe another time, you know, give me your info. And then I would never follow up with them. Um, that didn't happen. I, it took me an hour and maybe 30 minutes, I really slowly ate this chicken. And they stood to the other side of me, watching, not really saying anything to me, for talking to each other, really. Just kind of watching me eat chicken. At one point, one of them bought some chicken for himself. It was one leg. He ate it and he threw it away, and that took about five minutes but really for an hour and 30 minutes and I eat slow I ate the beans and rice put it together I got up multiple times to get a refill of my drink and I would always be there and I'll be like what are they not are they that desperate just to have me that they would just literally sit there and wait for me to finish eating and then finally it gets to the point where I'm finished eating and I'm like all done and they go, great, let's get in the car. And what is possibly one of the dumbest things, I get in the car. So now we're driving. And I kind of recognize the neighborhood. We've been driving for maybe 10 minutes. So it's not that far away from where I live. But it's close enough <laughs> to make me a bit scared. Um... At this point, I'm like, none of my family know where I am. Because I usually just send them a text when I leave house, but until I come back home, I don't send them a text again. So they know that I went through Don Pollo Loco, but I've been doing it so consistently, it would not... <laughs> There's a good chance my mom would just kind of forget and be like, oh, guess he's not checking in, guess he forgot. Um... So I follow them and I go inside this building and I go inside the building and we go to the top of the building and it's one of those buildings that's kind of like run down but at the same time it's not that run down. It feels dingy in a way. Um, and we go inside and I join up just in time to hear what they want to talk to me about. And he's like, all right, what do you guys want to talk about? I'm like, no, no, we are, we're not here talking. You're going to hear this. Um, and what then started was a man. I don't remember his name. Um, he introduced himself and said, oh, hello. Where are you here for the ceremony? And I'm like, I'm here for the what? He's like, oh, uh, not the right word. Um, the, ser the sermon? I'm like, I don't know what sermon you're talking about, sir. I'm Catholic, so you're not going to convince He's like, oh, no, no, no. R wrong word, wrong word. The... And I can't remember what word he used, but it was basically a pitch meeting. He was there to sell me some supplements, I think. Um, so he gets up, and I'm in this place for a brief time. I think I'm only by myself. But he's giving this spiel about this miracle drug that he has that is not FDA approved at all. Um, tells me that it can cure cancer, it can cure whatever you have, and the reason that it's not out there is that 
they don't want the cure for something that ails you to be inside you, uh, to be out there in the open. So they hide it from people. I said, okay. And at this point I realize I'm the only one here who has not heard this before because everyone else in the room has already bought into what this man is selling, including these dudes who said they know me from high school, said all these other things about me. And the reason I know that they aren't new on, new on this is because when he finished, he, taught, he went to me and said, so what do you think? And everyone else turned to look at me. So I go, huh? And I did what I did best. And I kind of bullshitted. And I said, oh, you know, this sounds, you know, it sounds interesting. And I thought that he was about to sell me like, oh, you, do you want to sell this? And he's like, and then it turned out like, no, he didn't want me to sell any of this. He wanted me to have it. So he gives me the pills and he says, trust me, take them. And I go, okay. And at this point, I am now getting texts because he's been going on for about an hour. And now my mom has come home and realized I'm not home. So where am I? And I go, you know what? I would love to take this right now, but I kind of need to get going home. So um, with all due respect, I need to get going home. And these guys are my only way home because I don't know where I am. And he goes, oh, you know, you know, no, no problem, no problem. And I go, take me home. And say so he says, take him home. And we go back and I'm like, at some point I realize I can't let these dudes know where I live. So I said, drop me off near the Pollo Loco. And they said, well, I don't, we don't want to do that. We don't want to drop you off by the Pollo Loco. Let us drop you off home. And I said, shit, that's bad. It is really bad. Because again, I don't want them to know where I live. In theory, I don't really know who these people are other than they know my name and claim they know me from high school. Um, a lot of people claim they know me from high school that I don't remember, to be honest. Um, so what I do instead is that there's a whole cul-de-sac of houses and mine live all the way at the end of the cul-de-sac. Um, so for before the beginning of it near the hospital, I tell him, you know, what, drop me off right here. And from here, it's just like a minute walk from my house. You, I've spent too much of you guys' time. Thank you very much for the, I'm trying to be as courteous as possible and not sound fearful of my goddamn life at this point. And I go, okay, cool. And he goes, says, let me give you my number and you can text me after you've taken the things and we can talk about how you feel. And I said, okay, sounds good. He's like, and in general, I'll contact you again if you ever want to, you know, go back and get more. And I said, okay, sounds good, man. So they let me off. And at this point, I texted my mom and said, I'm coming home. I've had a bit of an experience. And I'll tell you when I get home. But it's gonna, I'm going to be back in 10 minutes. She goes, okay. I come home. Um... And when I go to stay there, I go inside the house. And at this point, I talk to my family. I tell them basically what happened. And they're like, did you just get kidnapped? I'm like, well, technically, no. He's like, I think technically you did not get kidnapped. But it sure sounded like you were just kidnapped and taken to some weird place. And I said, I guess, I guess you're kind of right about that. But I don't really see it that way. And even now, I kind of do feel like I've been... Every time I've ever told anyone this story, they always be like, were you, just, were you just... Did you just let them kidnap you and take you someplace? And I'm like, I guess. But they were really nice about it. It was like the most friendly kidnapping ever and taken to someplace. But I digress. I didn't really technically get kidnapped. There were no lawsuits or arrest made. But my mom said, you gotta throw that whatever they gave you away. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. I'll throw it away. So I threw it away, and I never took it. I remember trying to go for the phone number, and when I texted the phone number, there was no... It was almost like the the phone number didn't exist. So I was like, what the fuck happened? 
And I, my sister also had a yearbook with me in them. And when I looked back at the yearbook, I never did find those dudes. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck happened. And that's basically the end of that. I still don't know what the hell happened there. I don't know what drugs they were selling. I don't know if that actually had the cure for cancer. I don't know how they knew my name. I don't know anything about it. All I know is that I have a very weird experience. And those are my scary stories, everyone. I hope you enjoyed them. I hope you got a little bit spooked there. Um, these are, of course, and I also hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you have a happy Halloween, everyone. Don't go into strangers' cars. I don't know why the fuck I did that. I could have been killed. I could have been so many things. I could have been kidnapped. I could have been ransomed. I could have been so many things. I don't know why the hell I did it. Just say no. That's my advice to you. Just say no. And that's the end of the 13 Nights of Halloween, everyone. Thank you very much if you made it this far and watched them all. Um, if you didn't watch them all and you picked and cho chose, either way, thank you very much for watching the videos. Until next year, everyone, stay spooky. <laughs>